Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your weekly astro tarot and intuitive forecast for the week of July 15th, 2019. Now, before I get started, I want to check in with you guys. I want to ask you how it is that you are doing. How are you feeling? What's going on around, what's going on around you? Because last week, was a little tense to say the least we saw it in our government we're seeing it now we're seeing it in our personal lives i mean it was more than just mercury retrograde mercury retrograde has a tendency to kind of create miscommunication and a little bit of tiny problems problems but it's the bigger things like saturn retrograde and pluto retrograde that will take a tiny problem and turn it into a bigger thing actually as i'm saying that that's crazy because that was the message that i felt behind these cards for this week ahead with the mouse and the sun it's almost like what could be a tiny issue turns into a much bigger issue not because of mercury retrograde but again because of the power planets saturn and pluto so i don't want the world the internet to be like look what mercury retrograde did you know mercury retrograde is a tiny little tweak in the great the greater system it's the collapse that is happening that is much bigger and much greater that is being, you know, taken down by, you know, problems that have been in existence for a long time. And those problems are being revealed by Saturn and Pluto. It's the tiny wrench or the wrench that gets thrown into the bike, the broken bike that kind of makes all of it collapse and fall apart. So that's what we're seeing. That's what we've been experiencing. There's been a lot of communication breakdowns. I have a concern for regret, but while I was looking at that message of regret of things that we say or things that we do that we instantly are like, oh my gosh, or maybe not instantly, but you know, a few days later we're like, oh, I can't even believe that that happened or you know, this is here, I thought that I dealt with this and now I'm feeling really bad. The message that I feel with that is that it's just so powerful, but when you get into a space of needing to give yourself compassion, it's these lessons that are bringing you there. And that's the major teacher right now is to teach you that when you do make a mistake, when you do word vomit, when you do you know, have a breakdown, it's the universe or the divine teaching you that you are just as worthy of forgiveness and compassion and love despite the fact that you are an imp imperfect being. I feel like for so many of us, we're so quick to uh, forgive others but we don't forgive ourselves and we beat ourselves up or for some of you you are learning to see imperfection in other people and learn to move past that and learn to forgive that and to accept it and to embrace it and learn how to work with it but we'll cross that bridge when we get there because there is this message this week of compromise that it is that I want to talk to you guys about now we're about three minutes or two minutes into this video so for those of you guys who are brand new because there has been some growth here I want to welcome you Basically how I do the week ahead videos is I pull a few cards and I connect with my intuition in order to see what this full week ahead looks like, the energy of the week as a whole. And then I break the week into three ch chunks, three different parts. The first portion of the week is covering Monday through Wednesday. The second portion of the week is Wednesday through Friday. And the third portion of the week is Friday through Sunday. Then I go over our strengths and our weaknesses and how to work with both of those. So the timestamps for that will be down in the comments pinned and also in the description box. That being said, let's go ahead and get started into the overall energy of this week. Now, as I said in the start of this video, I am seeing a lot of collapse. A part of it is the tiny influence of Mercury, but the major calamity is the word that just came through is coming from Pluto and Saturn. Pluto rules death, transformation, transition, rebirth, and regeneration. Saturn is connected to stability, structure, rules, regulations, and businesses. Like the, the things that it is that we want to commit ourselves to that require us to be mature, that require us to grow. But both of these planets have been retrograde for a while now. And will stay retrograde and basically what they've been doing is they've been breaking everything down they've been breaking and restructuring everything so when that happens and mercury goes retrograde this solid concrete foundation that you thought you were standing on is going to show fractures in it we're seeing that in our planet with the tectonic plates kind of shifting and moving we thought that 
our ground is safe no we need to protect earth mother you know she we only get one planet and she needs us to protect her and to do damage control now more than ever we need to retrace our steps on the damage that we have put on her already that is very and commit ourselves to it that is very saturn retrograde that is very pluto retrograde and both of these planets are moving through the sign of capricorn which rules the earth so this is our foundation our commitments our not our beliefs but the things that it is that we are that we need to take care of whether we want to or whether we don't want to sometimes it's so easy for us to get so caught up in entertainment and the fun things that we ignore our responsibilities on the flip side sometimes we can get so rigid in our ways and building you know with our work that we become workaholics that yeah we have success but our personal lives are a mess and what the universe wants and what the divine wants is balance for us for me and for you and the way to do that is to put the planets in retrograde motion so that we can revisit retweak learn do things a little differently I don't care who you are for many of us we can be really set in our ways that is the reality and when the planets go retrograde it's causing us to become more fluid and flexible and to learn how to flow and I just made a video about this a few hours ago that's up right now currently about learning how to flow and not to be so forceful and rigid with things so that's the start of um, what I'm seeing for this week. There's this space of, um, what was the word that came through? Conformity. I don't know why that word is coming through so strong. It is the beginning of this week, so we will see, we will watch how it kind of unfolds, but that came in clear as a bell. Conformity. Okay, so looking it up, conformity means compliance with standards, rules, or laws, behavior in accordance with socially accepted conventions or standards. standards. So, the thing is, is that, yeah, that's with government, that's with structure, that's with rules and regulations, wherever it is that we find that in our lives. But in our personal lives, I'm really hyper-focused on our personal lives right now. But no, actually, now that I'm saying it, it's more than personal. It's government right now. It's our our establishment. Is it is it strong for us? And instead of us conforming all the time, like we have to really question our question what it is that we're conforming to. We have to question what we're listening to. We have to question what, why these rules are in place and do they serve us or do they neglect something or someone or an aspect of ourselves. So that's what I'm seeing here is you're really needing to, all of us are looking, asking ourselves, you know, this, this thing that is calling me to confirm or to commit myself to it or to listen to it does it serve me does it resonate and if not i have to break free from this or i have to work to separate myself from that or to create a change there and that could be again on a global level or it can be in your personal life in personal relationships conformity is not necessarily a bad thing because the next word that came with that is compromise if the relation is healthy or it's something that you want to commit yourself to and the universe, the divine, your intuition kind of co-signs with that, it's a good thing to learn how to compromise, to learn what the other partner is doing. That's what I'm seeing with this two of pentacles is almost like, okay, this is how you do things, this is how I do things, let's try and figure out, figure something out for us. Let's lower our defenses, let's not have our guard up. We can be so set in our ways, we can so be so rigid and stuck, but it's a good thing to kind of figure this out if this relationship is something that I think is worth it. And if a person is not willing to com compromise or to confirm or is even conform or is even open to the thought of you or open to commitment with you, this is not just relationships. This are intimate relationships or romantic. This is business partnerships, friendships, etc., etc. If they're not open, then that's not something that you need to anchor yourself to. It's time for you to kind of move forward and find something else. So that's something that I'm seeing. Then on the 16th, is when we have the eclipse, the total lunar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn, again, is, is this something that I can count on? Is this something that's reliable? Is this something that is a permanent fixture in my life? Or if it is a permanent fixture, is it going to stay in this role or is it going to shift and to evolve? And what the eclipse is going to do is it's going to highlight what that answer is, if it's a yes or it's a no. Now, I have another video that's coming up after this that's going to detail the energy, the messages that I see behind the lunar eclipse. So make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you can see that video when it comes on. And I really recommend you turning on your notifications. That way you can see when it comes through or you can hear it and get notified. 
but as across the board, you know, it's it there's this element of is this what I want or maybe not is it what I want, but can I find what I want in this? And if that is not the case, the universe can sense that there is discord and it will break it down before you get broken down by it, if that makes any sense. Now, looking at the overall energy of this week, the cards that it is that I'm seeing are the woman and the clouds. This is from the Lennerman deck. We also have this card of you have what it takes. Always follow your heart unless it's been broken. Then you must lead it back into love, the universe. P.S. Did you know that hearts are never too big to mend, too small to rebound, or too tired to love again? No matter what it is that you've gone through, no matter how many clouds are covering your light right now, and how heavy your heart may be feeling in love, or no matter how confused you are, or how conflicted you may feel, there is an, an energy around here that is working to create the path for you. And this path is not something that's going to shift all the time. It's going to be something that's very solid. And I feel that really, really strongly. The next card that I have that I see is the Eight of Swords, which brings anxiety and tension, which connects me back to the clouds. We're seeing the King of Wands, which is a leader, an effective leader, a passionate leader. And someone who is loyal, committed, and has what it takes to do to go the distance and will... You know, there's no sense, there's no sense of fear. There's no sense of, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this or hesitation. This is about courageous development, courageous movement forward. Then we're seeing the world, the Ten of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles. And these cards are from the Egyptian tarot. Now the thing that I'm seeing with this is there is a completion of a cycle, which makes a lot of sense because the lunar eclipse is usually about the completion of something that we have to kind of accept and we can see it as a good thing and be excited about it or we can see it as something that might stress us out and there tends to be a lot of emotion usually but with eclipses in general especially lunar eclipses because the moon rules our emotions it rules our feelings our intuition and it kind of heightens everything and brings it up to the surface but even more so because this eclipse is happening in the sign of Capricorn so the moon is in the sign of cap cap and the sun is in the sign of cancer and it's highlighting cancer is so sensitive but in a way that it rules from its feelings it rules from its emotions and it can't hide that meanwhile the moon ruling our emotions is in the sign of stoic capricorn which is testing a lot of our patience it's testing a lot of us to say you know what put your feelings aside for a second in order to do what's right or Put your feelings aside, your fear, your hesitation, your doubt, and follow your heart. Follow where you've been pulling. Where are you being called to flow? Instead of you resisting and being so rigid, why don't you try being open and see what happens? And it's going to create an incredible breakthrough for you. Yes, there have been, there have been things in the past that shook you up and made you feel like you can't you know, do it again or that you have to be more guarded and protected. We see that with this energy. We have the emperor here who is so guarded and so firm in his beliefs. And usually the emperor by himself, he has what it takes. He can do what it takes as far as, I don't want to say balancing his emotion, but, you know, being there, being a provider. But when we have him paired up with the nine of pentacles, what I'm seeing is someone who is so guarded and so overly protected that it's almost as if no one can get in. And basically what happens is, is that energy that you put out there, it's going to come back to you. People sense, whether you believe in the laws of attraction or whether you believe in magic or intention or whatever, people can sense when someone has their guard up. People can sense when someone is protecting themselves. And if they can sense that, they're like, okay, if you have your guard up, then there's something that I probably should fear right now. So I'm gonna have my guard up in response to what it is that you're doing with you. But I'm gonna give you know my all to everyone else because I'm more comfortable with them. So it's almost like a ripple effect. And what it is that you put out there, if you're so stoic, if you're so guarded, if you're trying to juggle multiple things, people, number one, they can't commit to you. They can't invest in you because you have so many things going on. You have so many different options, options, or maybe they look at you and they think you don't have what it takes. So I can't invest in you right now this week, but across the board, people are changing their minds. You know, they're, they're, they're looking at all of the details and they're trying to figure out what is the best thing for me to commit myself to. So with Mercury retrograde and Saturn retrograde and Pluto retrograde, there's all of this, all of this energy up in the air. So you want to make sure that you at least are solid so that when the, the chips start falling, 
And this person who is juggling their two of pentacles decides, okay, I'm gonna put this pentacle here, I'm gonna invest it here, and I'm gonna put this one over here, I'm gonna focus on that. You're the person that they're investing in in the right way versus you being someone who is so guarded and so walled that no one can get to you. So that's something that it is that I'm seeing and yeah, yes. Um, the other thing that I wanna read to you is this card from the Isis Oracle and it says, beloved initiate, there are times to surrender and let go, but there are never times to give up. Persist with your bold faith and inspired action until the impossible happens. Isis has a spirit of triumph and will never fail in her quest, no matter how bold or impossible it seems. Let her inspire you, believe. And also this card again says, you have what it takes. And then we have the, the King of Wands right here that's like, look, we can take this to the next level. We can bring this cycle to full completion because literally I have what it takes. I'm not gonna give up right now. Am I gonna force something? Absolutely not because the Page of Pentacles is here and Pentacles is all about investment and, and work and effort put in over time. It's not about forcing something. It's about applied intentional focus. But um, yeah, it's I see movement through that. So that's what it is that I'm seeing. I think the major block right now is the mental. It's the mind. It's anxiety that has people feeling like, I don't have what it takes. Like, yeah, you actually do. Eight of, eight of Swords is I'm caught in my brain. I'm caught in my thoughts. I'm caught in worst case scenario. I feel less than. I feel lack. Lack mentality is just a perception. and It's from the ego. It's not from the universe. Our universe is abundant and you have within you all of the gifts that you need to be successful in any endeavor that you're trying to work on within your life. Even Isis herself is telling you that you have what it takes. If there is a time to give up, it's not now. But watch to see what happens with what this lunar eclipse is going to bring into your life. So for the first portion of this week, I'm seeing the card of be true to yourself. You may not understand what's going on in their life, but you can always figure out what's going on in yours. Tally then I see I go where you go tell me are you finding that the occasional stranger has a crush on you that for words you've almost mindlessly chosen hearts broken too long begin to heal that eyes sometimes well up with tears when it's time to say goodbye remarkable our findings exactly p, p oh pst, your divinity is showing the universe then we see a lot of isolation a lot of building a lot of creating stability a lot of red tape a lot of structure here but i'm wondering if this is going to be a positive or a negative because as i'm looking at the chart for this for this week again conformity is showing up and i'm seeing the stress that is being put and placed on venus the planet of love beauty attraction abundance you know it's venus just seems like she's getting a lot of pressure on her um and at the same time she's trying to stay in this idealistic vision she's trying to connect to this idealistic this is what i love this is what i want to receive in my life this is the abundance that i'm trying to attract in something about the circumstances around, it's a lot. It's a lot of heaviness. It's a lot. These When you're working with the Lennerman, fish brings an abundance of, an abundance of isolation, an abundance of separation, an abundance of rules and regulation. It's not really free flowing. But somehow in her head and spiritually in her mind and her soul and her spirit, she's trying to see this greater picture. She believes that this vision does exist, but how do I get there? And as I'm saying this, there's a wasp that's stuck in my room right now I didn't know that he was in here but he is and what I'm seeing is you know maybe it could be anger maybe it's you know this frustration that's been building up that is making you angry that's making you want to strike out that's one making you want to force things maybe you're angry at the universe you you can sense this greater picture for your life or you have this vision for your life that seems so idealistic other people might tell you that this can't happen or this can't manifest and you're kind of seeing signs of it, not signs of it, but it's things around you that are magnifying your doubt and not magnifying your faith. And the universe is saying, look, this is temporary. The truth, Ace of Swords, the Chariot, movement, and then we have the Five of Wands, but the Five of Wands came up reversed. I'm seeing this as this competition, this obstacle, this barrier that you're seeing so much of this, it's time to kind of cut that out. It's kind of time to release that. And this just happens to be at the start of this week, which is the lunar eclipse in Capricorn, which is trying to remove out of your life 
you know, things that don't serve you so that you can move forward. That's the chariot. And the ace of swords is the truth. It is a message. It is cut yourself free from this blockage, please, because this is not where you belong. The thing that I feel with this is this message of I go where you go. I see that as flow. And it goes right back to what it was that my message was this morning about allowing yourself to flow and to move with things. I go where you go to me is like this effortless flow that you don't have competition. There is nothing that is blocking you besides your own anxiety, your own doubt. If you reconnect with the laws of attraction, you know that if this is something that you want, you can call it in. But if you are anxious and if you're striving and trying too hard to force it into your life, you are only attracting the struggle. You're only tra attracting the, the competition, the opposition. Focus on what is true about yourself, which is I'm an abundant person. This vision that I'm feeling and that I'm sensing for myself is bigger than me. And it's given to me by God. It's given to me by the divine. So I'm going to call that in. Meanwhile, I am not going to force anything to choose me. I don't have competition. I don't need to compete for you to invest in me. I don't need to compete with you and another person. Maybe that's what's going on with this two of pentacles that's going on here. I don't need to compete for your attention. I don't need to compete for your investment. It's what's mine is mine. I don't have to fight it and force it. And if I ever find myself fighting or forcing it, I take the blade of truth. I cut myself free from it and I move back again with intention. That's what the chariot is all about. The competition doesn't exist. That's what I'm seeing for the first portion of this week. And with that, I see soul retrieval. Isis, healing goddess, now offers you spiritual restoration and deep soul healing through the art of soul retrieval, reclaiming peace of you lost, pieces of you lost through trauma, old and new. Soon you will enjoy greater wellness, energy, and power. So be willing to go through the healing process, knowing that any emotional clearing taking place is leading you to wholeness. And again, this is you cutting yourself free from these old things, you know, once I let go of this, once I release this, it's not, it, as it's getting released, it comes forward to me in another form. But if that is truly the case, I need to be full, I need to be whole, I need to be ready, and I need to be attracting into my life only the positive, only what it is that I want for myself. A healthy, thriving me and all things around me that support that and lift me up. That is my intention. That is my truth. That is my mind. That is my words. That is what I'm thinking. That's where I'm at. Competition doesn't exist. That's the first portion of this week. Second portion of this week, I'm seeing the heart card with the swans. I'm seeing the home of stability and structure. And then I'm also seeing the bridge. This was one of the first cards that I pulled out for the second portion of the week. And it is pretty much where we are moving from. We're going from here to there. And I asked, where are we going? And I just see this as home is where the heart is. I'm going to where I belong, where my heart is full, where I am full, that is where I am headed. Then I'm seeing the hanged man. I'm seeing the Eight of Pentacles, and then I'm seeing the Ten of Swords. Then afterwards, I see earlier disappointments were just rehearsal for the great stuff coming your way. Never regret love. No matter how blind, it improved your vision. No matter how foolish, it made you wiser. And no matter how generous, it made you more. Hubba hubba the universe. So again, this is about being in a space of I totally surrender and because of that universe you are going to take me to where it is that I belong so that I can grow. I do not want to give my energy and commit myself to putting energy, work, effort, intention, um, attention into building something that isn't going to appreciate all of my energy, all of my light, all of my abundance, all of my love. That is what the Eight of Pentacles is. Pentacles is all about commitment connected to Earth energy, Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn. So this is, if I'm going to commit myself and work and pay attention to the details of this and listen to you and hear what you want and hear what you're saying and build this structure, it, or let's say this is this vision that it is that I have for myself, this thing that I want to create, this thing that it is that I want to do, if I'm going to do that, I need to have the resources, I need to be able to be in a space where I am creating that and that's where we're going. I am creating something that I love that is going to provide for me that ultimately is where it is that I belong. 
no one can take that from me. The universe controls, you know, the pull. The universe controls the circumstances around me if I allow myself to flow with it. The hanged man is all about relinquishing and almost surrendering into the divine in order to pull you into the space that it is that you belong. The cuts that you made or the things that have happened and occurred during the lunar eclipse at the start of this week with that Ace of Swords, it's so funny that we have the start of Ace of Swords to the Ten of Swords. We have the beginning to the very end. And basically those cuts, it helps you to remove yourself. It's almost like rock bottom, but at least you can see the truth. You can at least see where it is to build up. So basically maybe for a lot of you guys, maybe you're branching out and leaving leaving high school, well technically it's summer, but leaving one thing to go to the next. Maybe you're starting a class, maybe you're traveling, maybe you're moving, maybe you're getting a divorce, maybe you're starting a relationship, maybe you're giving birth. These are things that you have to surrender to to get to the space that it is that you belong where your heart is going to be the most full. Why is it a transition? Well, because again, at the start of this week, we had the Ace of Swords, which says this is the truth, this is clarity. We're gonna cut you away from the mind, the over mental activity of the thoughts and anxiety. We're gonna cut you from that and we're gonna release you from it. That is 10 of swords. And then we have the bridge, bridging the gap, moving you from the past into the future. What is in the future? Something that is worth your investing, worth your commitment, worth your attention, worth your time. And it is where ultimately you belong, where the universe has been trying to pull you. Even as I'm saying this, I'm looking down at this card with the hanged man, and it's a person who is giving the sacrifice of a cow, and he has a sword that ultimately is going to be the sacrifice. So it's almost like a life is given for a life. So at some time, at some point, maybe there is a major sacrifice that is that you have to give to the universe. Not that I'm saying that you have to kill a cow or anything like that. Please don't kill anybody, oh my gosh, or anything. But it's just showing that when there's something that is given to the universe out of faith, you know, whether you're just like, I give you my, you know, my fear, I give you my job, you know, leaving this old past to or old thing that I've been working on to go into this next future, this next thing, that is what I'm sacrificing. So something is being released in order to create. Again, somehow I'm really feeling called to the 18th with this, with Venus trying Neptune, it's this greater picture. Yeah, there might be splitation, that's what I like to call it, is the splitting of things that are happening around you, but it's for this greater vision, it's for this greater purpose that is so idealistic, that is so connected to the divine, that is undeniable. So I see this as such a good, positive thing. I, if you have to release, if you have to cry, then I, I really encourage you to do it and to get it out. But also, don't stay in a space of heaviness for too long because anytime there's a release, there is always something brand new. The card that comes with this is stay true and be in your power. You are a sovereign divine being with spiritual authority and freedom within. You do not need permission from anyone to be who you are and live your life as you so choose. This is your divine birthright. Guard it as the precious treasure that it is and remember that you are a divine being and you're free to be you. And did I not just make a video about being totally free and being totally released from expectations and you know going with the flow of things and i want to read this again to you guys early disappointments were just rehearsal for the great stuff coming your way so it's like i sacrifice it i let it go i release and now i'm stepping into this new space shout out to the lunar eclipse and capricorn that is helping that to happen now moving on to the third portion of this week i'm seeing this mouse again which we saw earlier and i'm seeing the snake i'm seeing the key then we have the tower reversed, we have the six of swords, and we have the hermit reversed. I'm doing a really difficult, having a really hard time holding these cards up right now, just because I'm pretty pumped right now. And this card says, what would love do? What would love do? Do you know why it's so easy for us in the unseen to quickly pinpoint your whereabouts? It's because you leave footprints of love Hashtag the universe. P.S. The legend of Bigfoot continues. So basically what I'm seeing with this is what would love do if you knew that you couldn't fail, if you knew that it would be a resounding yes for you, if you knew that what you wanted would manifest, what would your actions be? What actions would you take? And this is connecting me to the energy of the hermit reversed. 
What I don't want is for you to stay in a space where you are holding your love back, where you are holding your light back, where you are holding your voice back from expressing and from shining and from being. There comes a point where it is time for you to come out of the cave and it is time for you to believe in yourself, to have faith and to take a step forward and to invest in your own vision, to invest in your own healing, to invest in your in learning how to speak up and share your voice. And a part of that takes me right back to the beginning of this video when I said, we're imperfect beings and when you find yourself living and learning and making mistakes along the way, these are essentially teachers that are showing you that even when you make a mistake and when the path isn't so obvious to you and you have to learn in order to experience so that you can grow, so that you can receive, so that you can achieve, when those things happen, when those mistakes happen, it's a, a, a chance to show, and to, sh to, to show yourself and to treat yourself to compassion, to understanding, to love, and to not give up. And you deserve that just as much as anybody else does. And that's what I'm getting at the end of this week is it's time for you to get out of this hermetic mode of I don't need anybody, I don't want this. Yes, you do. Yes, you actually do. You've been wanting it for a long time, but you have been denying yourself the pleasure of it. That is the truth. What would love do? Love would through and it wouldn't question it. It wouldn't second guess it. It wouldn't tear it apart. It would receive it. It would see it as a blessing. And instead of going in and crushing it with what they think is truth, which is just a perception, they would move from a space of vibration, of energy, of love. That is what love would do. The reality is, is that your actions in that moment, it shows you how you feel. It is your mind, it is your limiting beliefs that kill the truth of what is going on, which is, I do love this thing. And I feel that so strongly. Finally, it's like you've been resisting with the tower card. And you can choose, ultimately, always, it's your choice to decide what it is that you do. But the universe, the divine, is really calling this decision that you've made, calling it into action again and causing, calling you to look at it, to re-examine it. Why? Well, because, well, to, to support this that I feel is Mercury retrograde moving back into the sign of Cancer. Cancer is all about, let me show you, what card was it? Oh, I think it was over here. Cancer is all about, this is where I belong. This is my home. This is my heart. This is where I am safe. But in order for others to feel safe around me, I have to be safe. I have to receive. In order for me to be safe with myself, I have to give to myself. And if I give to myself, I have to receive. I cannot be on defense all the time. I can't be pushing and squashing and crushing, you know, this, this stuff, this abundance, this blessing. That's what I'm seeing. So there is something here that is pulling you towards it. The snake here is not necessarily a negative thing. And I see this in this spread, this reading, I see it as very positive. There is, it's more than attraction. It's a, a pull that it's not even karma, it's divine. It's, you know, it's not that you're being seduced. It's, I like this, I love this, I want this. This is my desire, this is the desires of my heart. The desires of your heart are what are pulling you to where it is that you belong. So ask yourself, what would love do if I, if I didn't have this resistance and this wall, this blockage, where would my heart go? What would my heart choose? Do that. It's these annoying tiny little blockages here that are blocking the light. I saw that as um, this overall arcing energy of this week. It's like, well, what's blocking the light? It's these annoying things, these tiny things. I tweeted earlier on this week and I said, it only takes one termite in time to take down an entire house. That's real. And then from that, we're moving forward. From that, there's healing. But ultimately, you guys choose what you do. But if you're going to choose, let the decision be won out of love. What would love do? Now let me read this to you. A spiritual practice has come or is soon coming to your attention that will help your soul journey. Take your time to develop and practice your chosen spiritual discipline regularly. This will help you to grow in grace and power, anchoring the the spiritual light within the body of your soul. And I love that. Now let's go ahead and talk about obstacles, shall we? I think that the biggest obstacle right now is that people are putting on a front 
um, they're saying this isn't what I choose, this isn't what I want, or this is what I want. In reality, you have to be honest with yourself and with others with what it is that you truly want. The other thing that I'm seeing is emotions being magnified, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it's showing you, I do want this, I do love this, this is my truth. But what I wanna make sure is that what it is that you are saying that is, is what you want or what you're doing or what is up and what your calling is, is actually what your heart truly wants for you. That is ultimately where it is that you belong. That's where we're supposed to be headed. Um, and this other thing too that I'm seeing with the house is that for some of you guys, you're using the home as a crutch. You're just staying there hiding away. And when you do that, there's a whole world out there for you to experience and for you to explore. It's time for you to get out of your current um, comfort zone. Sometimes the home is not an actual physical location. Sometimes it's a comfort zone. You've been staying in a space for a really long time and it's a crutch to you now. At first it was a spot for you to heal and for you to fix your wounds and now it's like almost like a negative thing. So it's, it's, you're getting pulled, you're getting called to go out. Oh, and even as I say this, we have the Knight of Wands who needs to seek, who needs to adventure, he needs to explore and to be bold. This doesn't mean by explore that you, you know, are reckless. For some of you guys, this means actual exploration. For, for others, this is about committing yourself to something and taking the adventure, the leap of faith into diving into that, that one thing. The Eight of Wands is all about activity and motion and movement. So there's a, there's speed here. It's not necessarily a bad thing. And then Nine of Pentacles and the Strength card is reminding you that you have what it takes and that you don't force anything. You don't push it. If it's for you, it will come to you. But at the same time, if you're called, you have to have the strength to take that first step to get that whole solid vision for yourself. What will happen when you do that? Oh, I'm sorry. You'll find what you seek. <laughs> you'll find what you seek. If you've ever suddenly found and been loved by someone amazing, awesome, fun, and fantastic, chances are astronomical that you will again. If you haven't yet found such a person, chances are astronomical that you will. It is up to you. What does that mean? That means the choice is yours. What, I need an extra message. I need extra support with that. I'm afraid to love. Oh, sorry, love is never in vain. <laughs> when you finally see what this whole time space thing is all about, you're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, and you're gonna be so, 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 so happy that you loved as much as you did. You're never gonna regret the chances and the choice that you make to love others, to love yourself, and to give all of yourself to the things, the people that it is that you love. What you will regret are the moments where you held yourself back. The you will regret, um, you know, not giving yourself a chance. And at the same time, you can't force something. If something or someone doesn't actively participate in giving that love back to you because they're too solid, they're too rigid, or they just don't feel that way, or they don't wanna, you know, sign you on for this job, or they don't wanna uh, give you money for this trip, or this college is rejecting you, or this message is rejecting you, that is not where you're meant to go, but that doesn't mean that your passion, your pursuit for that thing stops there. It just means that you've been, you're being rerouted. Now, the next message that I'm seeing that is working for us here, I'm seeing this card right now, and I just see this as someone asking for help and you being carried there, um, and it's a miracle. Whether it's you counting, relying on someone else to show up for you and to give to you in the same way that you have given to them, or it's the angels, it's divine, it's our ancestors, ask them for help to carry you. It's not always up to you to do everything your way. Um, or to do everything by yourself. This is two of cups, and this is again, you connecting with the other, you connecting with the other thing. That could be another person, that could be an angel, that could be a, a whatever, a job, whatever. It's you connecting and pairing up in union because that thing is equally invested in you as you are in it. What's going to happen? The sun, that's gonna give you a lot of light. It's going to give you a lot of sunshine and radiance in your life and also health. Because again, it's not up to you to do everything by yourself because that is going to wear you down and make you weak. And then three of pentacles, if this is this card is all about working with others and linking up in partnership, but there may be people who are not there for you or they may not invest in you, fine. Again, if they don't choose you, it's not a, a no. It doesn't stop the road to what it is that you love. It just means that you're rerouted to the thing that loves you just as much. 
back to love again. I mean, come on. Love in spite of it all. Before this odyssey ever began, there was you, your best friends, and wide-eyed curiosity among you about who would be the first to leap, the first to forget, the first to kiss, the first to tell, the first to fall, the first to get up, and the first to remember that it all began with a dare to love in spite of it all. Is that you, Megatroid? P.S. I remember the glint in your eyes, all three of them. Three, right? These two eyes and the third eye. And then love is always the reason. Each person in your life is there for a reason. And that reason always has something to do with love, like me, the universe. And that's the message that it is that I'm seeing for all of us. Um, a few things that I want to say is that on the 21st, um, Venus is going to oppose Pluto and it's going to really create a strong pull and bond. Watch that day and watch the days around that just all this week as a whole to see what it is that you're being pulled towards and also make sure that you're not obsessed, that you're not linking onto it, that you're not clinging onto it and gripping because that's going to hurt more than it's going to heal. And then also on the 21st, I want you guys to keep your eyes open for information, news, and conversations that are really important to the next direction or the direction of your life, especially after the lunar eclipse in Capricorn. So that's pretty much all that I'm seeing for this week ahead. Remember to keep me posted on what's going on in your life. Remember to keep your sun sign and your rising sign in your comments so that I can continue to do my research. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.